as you would ever want. You know what I mean? Because especially when you're, when you're training dogs to hunt animals, and especially if they're out there dispatching them on their own, very, I, I never have to shoot. And I never have to shoot anything. Very rarely do I shoot any animals, whatever. Most of the time, I'm just guiding the dogs, and they're taking care of everything, you know? Um, and you want a dog that's efficient because you, you don't want an animal to suffer unnecessarily or whatever. You just kind of guide them to... And then just let their natural instincts take over. And Crocs, if he continues on, he's only he's less than he's about a year and a half old right now. If he keeps going at the rate he's going, he may be the most versatile and best dog that I have in my yard. Yeah, that's awesome. Have you uh, have you gotten any response with that cross? And <clears throat> everybody, I've, I've had two litters. And they're, uh, it's kind of embarrassing to say, but they're both accidental. You know what I mean? Like, it's its really hard to keep a stag hound, a determined stag hound out of anything. They're going to rip open a pan. They're going to jump over, even if it's a 10-foot fence. They're going to they are gonna do everything they can. They're really driven. So both times that I've had larger, larger litters, it's been Ivo's found his way in there, you know, one way or another. This last one, I had the female locked up. I had him locked up in a separate pan that had a, a top on the kennel. And he still figured out a way to get out and jump in the pen, breed the breed my female Airedale and jump back out. And I told my wife, I was like, "Listen, go to the store and buy me a buy me a bike helmet and a blanket to carry around because I'm obviously mentally handicapped. I can't keep this dog out from <laughs> <clears throat> from breeding these females, or whatever. But both times it's been good. So everybody has gotten a lurcher from me. I get picture. I get sent pictures and stories about how smart they are and how good they are with the family, how good they are with kids. And uh, one guy, I gave him to. Uh, he he's a sight home guy, but he's like, I want a dog that's you know got a little more brains that I can just carry around with me. Um, he's a trapper. He's a government trapper. And so I gave him a pup, and he's he's been blowing me up every you know every so often. I'll hear him. I'll hear from him. Like, Man, this dog is just incredible and. I tell him, send me pictures and videos. He never sends me a single picture or video. <laughs> but from what I hear, they've all been doing really good. Yeah. And, you know, I love the Airedale as a breed. And like I said, I'll do everything I can to make a, a healthier and longer lasting and an Airedale of what they're supposed to be. I mean, an Airedale with the quality of what you would want. You know what I mean? Um, that being said, function comes first you know if they're not if they're not capable to be out hunting several you know multiple nights a week if they're not able to do that then um and really they're not really a terrier you know because terriers are, are at the beginning they're purpose-bred working dogs and so that's that, that's what i'm going for more than anything is just to have healthy dogs that are that are capable of doing what i what i ask of them and um, but yeah, uh, and there, there, it's not just me doing this with the air dolls. There's 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 a bunch of us now around here in the U.S. that are doing you know some really good stuff. Uh, I'll kind of shout out one of my buddies in, in uh, Northern California. He's he lives on a big beautiful property out and out in the in the in the mountains and hills of northern california and he's got his own he's got his own airedale program going he's got airedales he's got patterdales he's got a he's actually got a a, a kangle for his property guardian mm-hmm. he's doing his stuff he's hit the plans that he's got and he's got some really good uh um stored semen from from really airedales that are already that have been long dead he, he's gonna have a really good program going i'll get you in contact with him at some point if, if you ever want that yeah absolutely um, He's doing some really good stuff. Um, like I said, uh, Peter, the guy running the the working Airedales page on Instagram, he's got some really he's got some cool plans coming up. You know, he's he's only a young kid too, and he's um uh, he's uh, you know getting his all his ducks in a row first before he starts breeding and doing stuff like that. But once he starts, it's, he's going to do some really good things with for the breed. Um, and yeah, so between all of us, and there, there's a lot more guys out there. And I'm actually looking to get a a, a, dog, a pup from a, a you know he's an older guy he, he's not on any social media or whatever but he's been he's had his line of Airedales going for you know several generations now and and uh, I'm gonna I'm starting to work with him he's actually here in Texas he's about five hours from me but still here in Texas 
and uh, he, me and him were kind of working together to keep the working line alive. And, and yeah, you know, honestly, right now, I mean, you, you know yourself, there's never been a better time to be involved in working dogs right now. But with the, social media it can be such a detriment to, to everything in a lot of ways, but it's also such a good thing. Um, I think I, I, I think about it all the time. If I was a kid and I had access to this, to social media of, of what's available today, I would just be in heaven. There's so many people working with so many breeds and just doing so much good stuff. And uh, social media is a spot where the working working dog community really exists, and you can go in and look at all these different pages and just it's it's, it's great. And that's what I'm saying. Like, okay, obviously, you know, there's going to be some people who maybe put stuff out there that's inappropriate maybe you wouldn't want that out there and just like the dog world just like the outdoors world like the hunting world just because you're a dogman and just because you're a hunter i'm not automatically on your team you know what i mean yeah but but i'm not automatically you know we're not automatically friends you could do some things that really bring a bad bad light for everybody else but on the other hand and you see, like, you probably, I mean, you you follow a lot of the same pages I do. You see people taking shots at each other and making posts about each other and stuff yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. But the reality is we're, we have a lot more in common than, than than we have differences. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what kind of breeds you're into. If you're a dog person, if you're a dogman, you know what I mean? You have that much more in common. How rare is it for you to be at a barbecue and talk to somebody who else is, someone else who's into dogs? You know what I mean? Like, it's rare to to be able to talk to people that are into dogs as much as you are. So we're all, we're all pretty much on the same team. I I just laugh at stuff like that, but I, I don't, you know, here's the thing. It's like, even like going back to the YouTube stuff, it's not me. You know what I mean? Like, of course I can make the decisions and read this dog to this dog, whatever, but really the stars are the dogs. You know what I mean? Um, They're a canine. They're, they're like canines survive throughout the, you know, throughout history because they're smart and they're good hunters. And that's, that's just what I'm trying to recreate with my dogs. And, um, even with like Bango, like I really hope as many people can see that video of him as possible. Cause it's not, it's not something, I mean, I'm proud of it, but it's not something that I've done. It's, it's him. He deserves all the credit. He, he's a, he's been the best dog I've ever, I've ever even imagined that I would have, you know? And I, I yeah, we do coon hunts and pig hunts and stuff like that together, but, um, I take him everywhere too, you know, on camping trips. He's there with me. Uh, one time <laughs> we were camping on the, on the edge of the lake and, uh, everybody went to bed in their tents or hanging out. I think it was, uh, I think we we're having a bachelor's. I think one of my close friends was getting married. So we had like a little bachelor party camping trip. And, uh, in the middle of the night, <laughs> one of my friends wakes me up. He's like, he's like, Hey, hey. He's like, what is that? What's that sound? And we could hear a coon like just kind of screaming out and I was like oh it's, uh, I think Bingo went and found a coon and he killed a coon right in the middle of the night and he went and put it right there uh, by our coolers like by where all the food was and stuff <laughs> so he wanted me to go cook it up for him like I've just had so many <laughs> just funny experiences with him so yeah there I was on a bachelor party trip cooking some raccoon hams for my dog <laughs> that's awesome and uh, I've taken uh, turkey hunting and it through through him through the dogs especially him though um, met some really cool people, um, and uh, yeah, I mean it's it's all about him, you know. I don't how I come across the people, whatever, you know. I am who I am. I don't care. Well, um, I just I want to paint my dogs in the best light possible. When it comes to like, you know, producing a better Airedale, that's that's the that's the long goal, you know. It's not gonna it's not gonna be just in a few. I remember the last time I said within a few generations I'll have a. I'll have an Airedale that can do everything and it's the most healthy and all that stuff. It's going to take a bit, you know? Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. So producing a good quality Airedale is what's going to be my main goal mm-hmm. moving forward. You know what I mean? Because I know how much uh, Van Gogh is a really good Airedale. And I know how much he's added to my life. So when somebody, if somebody comes across my stuff or, you know, comes across this interview or whatever and wants to get a dog from me, I want their lives to be benefited from from a good dog you know and so that's that's the goal i'm uh, producing a better airedale but i also want to produce the ultimate working dog and uh this cross that i've done with the stag hound airedale seeing how good of a dog that is 
like this is a dog you can you can hunt whatever with. You know what I mean? It's got a he's got a decent nose. He's got the speed and athleticism, the brains to to do whatever you want. So I'm looking at in the future, kind of not creating my own breed, but doing my own cross that. If a working dog guy gets a pup from me, it's it's a dog that's cut out to do whatever he wants. You know what I mean? So I was looking at you know Airedale cross with Staghound cross with maybe a little bull maybe a little bit of bull blood because um, there's nothing like a there's nothing like a bulldog. You know, um, just the drive that they have, the brains that they have, their personality, their willingness to 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 move forward no matter what, like. I, I love bulldogs of all kinds. And uh, so some, some sight hound, some terrier, some bulldog, all crossed up. I want to make my own cross of, of working dog that's cut out for everything. And so I'm kind of looking looking forward to doing that in the future. I had a, uh, uh, just kind of go off a little bit. I had a, I, I came across, a, a friend of mine sent me a Craigslist ad and it was a, uh, some lady had her husband's bull terrier crossed with her, or her boyfriend's bull terrier bred her female Catahoula. And so my friend said, he's like, do you think you can bring one of these up to hunt? I said, I bet you I could. So I, I called the lady and she's like, yeah, so $50, you can come take, take a pup. I was like, sweet. So I went over there to her house and um, a whole bunch of puppies just came out. And I mean, you know, you, you're familiar with bull breeds, you know? Yeah. They're half, they're half bull terrier, half through Catahoula, but their personality was all, was all bully. And um, I was messing with all the puppies, and there was, a, there was one Merle female. She was a gray Merle. One of the most beautiful-looking little puppies. She looked like a, a blue a blue Merle pit bull is what she looked like. Mm-hmm. And immediately, I just wanted to go look at them, and I was like, you know what? I'll take her. Brought her up. She was one of the most fun dogs I've ever had. So she never even had a name. Like I couldn't figure out what to name her, so we just ended up calling her the Mamas. <laughs> And uh, man, I, I did. I, I trained her to track. I trained her to, you know, uh, I, she, she was on her way to be like a really cool dog. And this is a fifty dollar dog off of Craigslist. It was a mutt, basically, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was said, and I was thinking, like, you know, like she is such a smart, driven dog. I'm gonna cross her to an Airedale and just see what comes from there, and then maybe cross one of those pups to a sight hound or whatever. Um, she was our, she was my wife's dog, you know, she was inside every night and then I took her out. And so when she hit about seven months old, I was, I, I was, I told my wife, I said, well, I've already taught her to trail. I've already taught her to retrieve. I've taught her every trick in the book and she's picked everything up and said, you know what, let's, uh, I'm going to take her coon hunting and see where, see, see how, see how she likes it. So I took her on a coon hunt and the dogs that were, uh, I, that day in particular, the dogs caught a, a coon in the creek in some water, and she dove straight in at seven months old, and went and grabbed a hold of that coon and stayed with it until it was over. And I was like, man, you know what? So I took her out with, I paired her up with Croc, you know, my stag, uh, the, the lurcher. Paired them up together. I went and trapped a coon, um, and turned it loose. And, like that way, there was a, a fresh trail to follow. And she went out and treed that coon. Um, she was blowing me away by everything that she was doing and uh, of course I didn't let her have any contact you know one on one with the coon until it was time to test her in croc so mm-hmm. um, I I mean it was actually uh, I went out in the, in the, I went out about four in the morning took the dogs out and they treat a coon and uh, put the big experienced dogs away and let the and let the uh, the pups so the little bull terrier Catahoula cross and uh, croc which is my half stag half airedale left them on the tree, shook the coon out of the tree, and they they dispatched the coon in under a minute between the two of them. She was only seven months old. And I was so proud, I was so happy, and so I was thinking like, maybe this is what the cross I'll do. So the pups out of these two dogs will be a quarter, you know, roughly, roughly 25% Airedale, 25% Static Hound, 25% Bull Terrier, 25% Catahoula. And I know there would have been some good workers in that cross. Fortunately, about a few months ago, um, uh, she was uh, she was our inside dog, and she was our you know she was pretty protective too. She she was just our all around fun dog that we had. We live um, 
we live right off of the main highway. Mm. Yep. And, yeah, she put out, and one day I came home from work, and she was dead on the side of the highway. Yeah. And so that that was that was a big loss. That was probably I, I don't think I've ever been more crushed to lose a dog than her because she was just such a wonderful dog. And so I, at some point, I think like I was saying, I wanted to make a cross. Um, I wanted to make a you know a a, a purpose crossbred dog, you know specifically to be a versatile hunting dog. I think at some point I would like to if I can get a hold of some kind of that cross again, you know, a Catahoula cross to a Bull Terrier, um, just because she had such good qualities and neither of her parents were even working dogs. There was just it was just a random dog that I came across on that, you know, I was I was sent the ad, you know, and um, she was such a good dog. Maybe at some point if somebody makes that cross again, I will get, I will get a pup from that and incorporate it into you know, my, my own little breeding program. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So I, I grew up with dogs, of course, and always been into dogs around, uh, my, in my late teens, I saw my first Airedale, wanted to, I fell in love with them, wanted to get into them. And also around the same time, a few years later, moved to Lubbock and, um, got into hunting with dogs and everything just kind of fell into place when it came to, uh, finding a good Airedale it took me a while mm-hmm. found a good one trained him up found an, another one trained her up and then from there it's just kind of taking off and I guess the last time we spoke um, at the time the last time we talked I only had the two Airedales and the two stag hounds and uh, since then I've gotten uh, since then I've now had about six different Airedales that I've kind of gone through right now I've got I'm down to uh, three right now um, but I've worked with a I've worked with some good ones, had some litters, um, have a Airedale lurcher, half stag, half Airedale, and uh, had a couple of lurcher litters too. And I've got right now, I've got two pure stag hounds too. So that's kind of it's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah. So yeah, just talk about your uh, the experiences that you've had since the last time we talked about uh, you know the 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 ups and downs and the. The wins and losses. Yeah, man. There's there's been some really high highs and some low lows. I've I've lost a few dogs. Um, so, anyways, so since we've spoke, I, I ended up moving outside of Lubbock. I'm about 20 miles outside of town. Um, so I'm out, and we moved on to five acres. So I've, I've fenced it all in. Got my kennel set up, almost finished, and uh, I was just kind of freed me up to have more dogs and have more space to train them and kind of be outside of the city to really kind of focus on working with them. And so I had gotten, I had my two Airedales that I had, Bango and Judy, um, hunted with them, hunted everything with them, coons to, to pigs. And um, I got the opportunity to get two more Airedales. Um, they're actually Junie's sire and, and dam. Um, the guy that I'd gotten Junie from, he was getting out of hunting, kind of moving on to other things and so he offered me a chance to get the pair and I got them both and so that was a that was a game changer they're both really good hunting dogs just proven uh, pig hunting dogs more than anything so I had Annie I had Hondo that was their names and um, right around the time I got them we moved out here and uh, I tried Hondo out for a little bit he's an excellent hunting dog he just wanted no part of me so I ended up giving them back to uh, giving them back to the, Matt the guy I got them from so I stayed with Bango, Junie, and Annie. Had my first litter with uh, Annie and Bango. And um, this was my first litter that I've had since I was a kid living at home still. So I tried to do everything right. Ended up, the whole litter ended up catching Parvo. <laughs> but um, it, it worked out. We didn't lose any dogs. I was able to get them all placed in good homes. And, and so that was my first experience with, uh, you know, whelping a litter with with annie and she's such a good mom she'd had several litters before that um placed a couple of them within close proximity that way i can kind of keep tabs on them and and have them there um unfortunately no, none of the pups from that litter went to any hunters um but there's uh one of them a female went to my mother-in-law and so i've been able to uh, keep a close eye on her and she's an absolutely beautiful dog just perfect form long-legged tall lean 
Um, so I had those. So I had them. Uh, started working with them, hunting with them quite a bit. Um, then I got the opportunity to. So that whenever I first got on Instagram, there was a, a kid from the Midwest. He was he had a female named Zoe, and she was a really popular dog. Like he, she was actually the first dog that I saw that um, was doing any kind of work on Instagram. First, the uh, Airedale. And he was using her for coons and just, you know, a varmint dog. And I always said, I was like, man, I talked to him. And we're planning on doing a, uh, you know, a breeding between Bango and Zoe because they're two of the most popular Airedales doing it, and both proven. Well, just so happened, as soon as I moved out here, um, he, the guy, he gave me a call and he said, uh, he's like, I've got Zoe here. He said she, her, her best years are just kind of, uh, I'm not able to work with her too much. I got busy. If you want her, I'll give her to you. I was like, yeah, well, yeah, heck yeah, I'll do, I'll do whatever. So he's, he was out in, um, in uh, Iowa, and so we we picked a spot to meet in the middle. I drove uh, eighteen hours one way to go get her, and uh, oh no, sorry, I drove eighteen hours round trip to go pick her up. Met him in Missouri, and um, brought her back and she's been such a huge plus to my, to my little pro breeding program and just having her out in the field hunting she's terrific and so she's a little older than bango now she's seven she will be yeah she just turned seven in may and i've gotten some really good hunts out of her and i've actually gotten a couple litters out of her right now too and she's actually pregnant with her last litter that i'll have out of her right, right now um so i got her and so I, so there i had bango and the three females and I just had some really good hunts with them, um, really good times. Um, I had a litter out of Judy in April of 2021, and that was the first litter out of her. I placed placed a few of them in some working homes, and they're doing really good. Um, had a, and then I had a litter out of Zoe and Bango, which is one that I was really hoping for um, in June of last year. And those pups, you know, they're all still, all the pups that I've had that have come from, from me, they've all been out of Mango, and they're all pretty young still. Um, so I'm just kind of keeping close tabs on them. But now just through the litters, I've been able to meet, you know, some really cool people, uh, friends that I've known just from online, um, have driven out and got one. Uh, the guy, his name, this uh, guy named Peter, he runs the Hunting Airedales page on Instagram. He got a pup out of that litter, and he drove from Pennsylvania all the way to, all the way to North Texas to to come grab a pup for me, and we had a good time talking. and And he's doing really good with that pup. So that pup, I guess, is just over, uh, over a year old now, and he's got him on groundhogs, and he's training him up, getting ready for for coons, and who knows what else. But he's doing really good with them. But yeah, that's kind of like. Just to recap, yeah, those last few years, I, you know, it, it, things have been going really good. Um, I ended up selling uh, Annie to a, to a, a man in Arizona. Um, I had a, we had one last litter with her, um, but she's she was kind of the uh, she wasn't really getting along with the other females. Um, she's just kind of sticking to herself, and with her getting you know getting up there in age and stuff, I retired her from pig hunting. So sent her up to Arizona. She's she actually just had a. Uh, the, the guy that that got her um his kennel's called uh true grit airedales mm -hmm. had a litter out of her so she's she's doing good over there and uh yeah, so now i'm just so phase one for me was getting puffs on the ground out of bingo just to make sure just see what how they came see what kind of producer he was and so now phase two is um getting a female out of bingo to keep for myself and um and uh get I'm right now I'm currently looking for um, an unrelated uh, male Airedale would bring in and kind of that way I can breed him to, you know, Junie and uh, one of Bango's uh, daughters. And so on, on the breeding side, kind of not quite as going full force as what I was thinking. Um, just kind of cutting back a little bit, just make sure I got really good quality dogs first and then I'll continue to breed after this this litter. I'll get one this litter out of Zoe that she's pregnant with now and uh, litter out of Junie. And then from there, um, just kind of wait a little bit, get things together, get some good hunts out of the dogs, and then continue on with breeding after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my, um, my, he's pretty much my mentor. I, he, I got my first tag out from him. His name's Dean Bohannon. He's a, he's a sight hound guy. He's been working with, um, you know, everything from racing greyhounds to, to jackrabbit dogs to coyote dogs for the last, I don't know, maybe 40 plus years. So he, I talked to him whenever I, whenever I was about to have my first litter and he gave me a lot of pointers and, 
didn't really listen to him at, at first. You know, I just kind of tried to do things my own way, and that's whenever I had the the, the that litter catch parvo. Um, but since then, I've kind of I've learned to uh, give the female a parvo shot when she's about a month pregnant, and that kind of that kind of gets uh, gets into the puppy system from there. Give the first parvo shot at 30 days old, which is something I never knew. But give them the first parvo shot 30 days old, another one 10 days later, and another one 10 days after that. And then two weeks after that, but at that point, they should be, you know, their new homes, and they'll take them to the vet and finish off their shots. But doing that, I haven't lost a single pup to parvo since then. Um, another thing is uh, filtered water, because we're out on the well where we are, and uh, any well water from especially here in this area there's a lot of ag around um cotton fields corn fields and everything um so sometimes uh you know the, the nitrogen that they put in the soil can seep down into the to the water table and it can cause uh, birth defects and pro, uh, and stuff like that so um every time now from I, any female that i have that's pregnant make sure that to give them some really good clean filtered water so i'll go to the little to the grocery store right there the little uh you know, where you can fill up the five gallons of pure water yep. and have them on that as soon as I know that they're pregnant. And, it, man, it, it, that helped a lot. I've had zero birth defects. I know a lot of guys in my area, um, like neighbors that had some litters, uh, like my next-door neighbor had a litter of weenie dogs, and a, I think 90% of them came out with uh, an overbite. And I was like, what in the world? Like, where's that coming from? And uh, sure enough, you know, the our water – our well water has high levels of nitrate and that causes stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then even with, uh, like uh, human babies, it could cause like a hair lip or a cleft palate, stuff like that. So that's definitely, I'm gonna have to put a filter on that, but, um, no, but with the dogs, make sure she gets the right nutrition. Um, I put her on, uh, mostly raw meat with some puppy chow and, uh, eggs every single morning, just raw eggs every morning, just to make sure that her body's getting everything she needs to, um, you know, make the, all the little babies, and so it's yeah. Litters are there. It's it's a lot of work. It's not it's not something that you can just kind of let happen. You gotta be I, you gotta be right on top of them every step of the way, and just to give those pups the best chance of not only surviving but developing in the right way too. And so it's it's been great. It's been fun. It's been hard, um, but overall, it's been man, it's been great. It's been a really fun experience so i've had uh three airedale litters so far i had three um or i've had two sight hound litter pierce pierce staghound litters and two uh airedale staghound lurchers litters and so it, it's been one right after the other it seemed like since we moved out here and learned a lot of lessons i realized it wasn't as it wasn't going to be as easy as what I thought, but I've learned so much, and now moving forward, it's going to be a lot, whole lot easier, and uh, I, I'm a lot more experienced now. <laughs> you would, you, when you say it's it's more of a lifestyle than a than a, than a hobby, right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely, yeah. Um, if you're, especially if you're having, if you have multiple females, you got to do everything right from the from the get go. As soon as they start coming into heat, you know, separate them. Uh, put them on a filtered water, make sure that the males can't dig in. Because uh, when I first got Zoe, the um, she's, I was so excited to breed her to Bango. And I was I told people about it. I had a waiting list for people with pups. Um, and she came into heat and put her in the in the kennel that I have. And the, the kennel is only about five foot tall. But, you know, she's not going to get out of it. Put her in there with Bango. I saw them tie up. Everything was going good. She saw her getting heavily pregnant. And this um, this is her her this was her first litter ever you know she'd never been bred up until until, until then that she was five years old at the time and so i was so excited at uh, doing everything right made the whelping box inside the house for her and um i was sitting there um with the gopro and saw her starting to come into labor and i was even t i was talking to the gopro like okay here we go i've been waiting for this litter for the last this is a litter i've been dreaming about for the last three years I saw the first pup came out and I see hindquarters from a pup come out, a gray pup with a long, skinny black tail. And I'm thinking, oh, my God. Immediately I realized we had some lurchers on there. <laughs> so what happened was, uh, uh, you know, I didn't know, but Ivo, uh, which is my staghound, uh, male staghound, he jumped in, bred her, jumped out. 
without me ever knowing. He was ne- I never saw him in the pen, never saw him whatever. And I know staghounds are faster than Airedales, and I, apparently so is their semen. <laughs> and so I had a litter of, uh, I had six staghound Airedale puppies and one pure Airedale puppy. So it was a split litter, but the stag won out. <laughs> and I had one little female pure Airedale, and the rest of them were uh, stag lurcher crosses and and, you know, it's really obvious which ones were the lurchers and which one was the Airedale. The Airedale, you know, typical. She looked exactly like a spitting image of Bingo. The other ones, um, best way I can describe them is, you know what an Irish Terrier looks like, right? Yeah. They kind of look like a stretched out Irish Terrier. They're, they were all like a tan to red color. Had a little bit of, you know, that wispy, wiry hair. And, um, and then just long legs, long body. So that was that was in the plans for sure. I definitely wanted to have a lurcher litter in the future. I just didn't think it was going to be that quick. So I decided to keep one of the males from the litter, and I named him Croc because he looks like a he looks like a greyhound crossed with a crocodile. He's got a big long head, big long tail, big bo- long body, and he's been great. So that was um, so that was the first litter I had of Zoe months. You know, months later, or about a year later, I finally got her bred to Van Gogh and had a pure Airedale litter from her. And, and those pups, they've all, they're all beautiful dogs, and but um, still still waiting for them to prove themselves. They're doing good so far, though. But, no, I was going to tell you, man, uh, thank you so much for having me on. Mm-hmm. I, I things, things like this, like what you're doing, real dogmen are going to want to listen to stuff like this. You know what I mean? And the it's a credit to you. I appreciate people like you doing stuff like this, you know, giving, giving real dog guys a, a platform to talk about what they're doing. Um, and, you know, I just, thanks for having me on. Like, I'm glad to, to come up here and anytime you need to, anytime you want to talk dogs, just let me know. No, absolutely. And I will for sure. And, uh, you know, I've enjoyed watching your stuff and, and, and I'll tell you what, the response has been really good with your episode from in the past. So it was an easy decision to do part two, and it'll be an easy decision to, to do a part three. Hey, this is uh, Sean from the Bulldog Social Club Podcast. I have a quick favor for you. If you live in the Kansas City, Missouri area and are looking to buy or sell a house, uh, please contact my wife. Uh, she's a hardworking real estate agent uh, looking for looking for some business, and she'll make sure that you, uh, you meet all your needs. Uh, if you're actually looking to move to the Kansas City, Missouri area, again, contact my wife, and she'll work extra hard for you, and she'll get you into that uh, – that house that you're looking for in the good area and uh you'll be doing me a favor by uh getting her some business thank you very much bye